OK, so we've done our experiment. We've come to the conclusion that t equals 2.0l to the 0.5, or we might write that as 2.0 root l. OK, that's empirically, that's by experiment. OK, this lesson is about trying to actually derive an equation which might tell us uh, more exactly what we think theoretically the equation should be. OK, just to remind you, um, because we'll be using this again, the conditions for SHM, the crucial way of writing it, A equals minus KX. OK, the acceleration is equal to some constant times the displacement in the opposite direction. A is proportional to minus X. OK, constant proportionality is the key thing that we're going to look at during this lesson. So here's our uh, mass hanging on a string. We've pulled it back sideways. We've pulled it back to a displacement of x, which is at an angle of theta. OK, so one way we can come to an equation for the period of this pendulum is we look at the triangle first of all. So we've got a triangle. Here's the hypotenuse of that triangle. Here's the opposite to theta. Here's the adjacent to theta. So um, sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So that's x over l. All right, but however you derive this equation, there are different ways of deriving this equation. At some point, we will need to do an approximation. And the approximation I'm going to use in this one is that sine theta is approximately equal to tan theta for small angles. OK, um, one way to think about this geometrically is to think, well, OK, this length here and this length here are very much the same. That means that those two lengths are the same. And if this length, if we call this length L, then we'd have um, tan theta equals x over this length. OK, so those lengths are similar. So that's a valid approximation as long as we keep that angle small. OK, if we look at the forces on this thing, then hopefully we can see there's only two forces. There's mg going down and there's a tension in the string pulling it up. OK, if I resolve it horizontally, Right, the only part of that force is horizontal, which is horizontal to the right is some component of this T1, right, and that's T1 sine theta. So this is not an equilibrium because the thing is actually going to accelerate to the right. So this is F equals MA. Okay, just notice the minus sign here because X I've measured as being positive to the left, but the acceleration is going to be to the right. Uh, also, if we resolve vertically, okay, then vertically T cos theta is going up mg is coming down, so we've got t cos theta equals mg. OK, the shortest way to uh, get what we want out of these two equations, we'd like to cancel out the t1, so we can actually divide the one equation by the other. So what we get is t1 sine theta over t1 cos theta, so the t1s cancel out, equals minus ma over mg, so the m's cancel out, and it was sine theta over cos theta, but that's tan theta, and minus a over g. But we also already know that tan theta, we've said from over here, is almost the same as sine theta, and sine theta is x over l. So I'll get x over l equals minus a over g. OK, just one more little step to get the a on its own, multiply it by the g, take the minus on the other side, I get a equals minus g over l times x. I'm hoping by now you're looking at it and thinking, oh, that's simple, I might motion that is, because look, if the g over l is a constant for a given situation, so this is a is proportional to minus x, or a equals minus kx, where our k is the g over l. Okay, just a warning here, okay, this only works for small angles. So if you see somebody doing an experiment with a pendulum and they're swinging it way up in the air, forwards and backwards, then they won't get very good results. We normally call about 10 degrees as being a good approximation. Um, so we won't really notice the difference in doing anything that we're going to do timing with a stopwatch in a lab. OK, so that hasn't quite got us to an equation yet, but if we remember what we did for a mass spring system, we can use the same technique. So here's our general equation for simple harmonic motion. A equals minus 2 pi f squared times x. Here's the one we just derived. A equals minus g over l x. OK, so hopefully you can see that the minus 2 pi f squared and the g over l is the same thing. So the next step we can do is minus 2 pi over f squared equals g over l. Take the square root of both sides, we get 2 pi f equals the square root of g over l. To get frequency, we then just divide by 2 pi. But what we really want is a period. 
So t equals 1 over f, remember. So we do 1 over this, so 1 over 2 pi becomes 2 pi, and the square root of g over l becomes the square root of l over g. So this is the general formula linking the period of a pendulum to its length and the gravitational field of the planet it happened to be on at the time. Okay, quite often we need to find the length or gravity, so the first step we do is to square both sides. Okay, so this is a handy equation, but hopefully you can see that's just the same equation squared. Okay, just a few worked examples. So we've got the period of a one, pen, one meter pendulum on Earth. Just put in the equation, t equals 2 pi root L over g. 2 pi times the square root of 1 for the length divided by 9.8 gives you 2 seconds. If it was on the uh, same pendulum but a planet with twice the gravity, then gravity would now be 2 times 9.8. So we've got here 19.6 as the acceleration of gravity. The pendulum would be 0.71 seconds. If we want to find the length, that's where we have to start to do a bit more algebra. So square both sides, divide down by the 4 pi squared that you're going to get when you've squared 2 pi here is L over G multiplied by the G. It's got to be 0.248 metres long. And if you want to pendulum to have a period of one second where it's on, when it's on gravity at 27 uh, newtons per kilogram, then again, just a little bit of algebra allows you to, to derive a period of 0 0.6. Okay, one more little thing in this. This is a really handy trick. This is our first chance to have a little go at this. Um, this is how we go from um, putting numbers into equations to just doing them with ratios. So we've got a pendulum with a period t, and we want to work out the new period, which we call t dash, of a pendulum that's four times as long. Okay, but it didn't tell us how long the first period was. So algebraically, what we do is t equals 2 pi root L over g, and our new period, t dash, is 2 pi times the square root of our new length, L dash, over g. But we know that our new length, L dash, is 4 times our old length, L. So what we can write is t dash equals 2 pi times the square root of 4L over g. Okay, what was the point of that? Well, what we can do is to take this 4 and get it out of the square root. So that's 2, we've taken the, taken the square root of 4, times 2 pi times the square root of L over G. But 2 root L over G was 2 pi root L over G, sorry, was T. So we know that that is 2T. So T dash equals 2T. If we make a pendulum 4 times as long, then we'll double its period. Okay, that may seem almost obvious. Um, but if these numbers become a bit complicated, or if we, for example, started changing the length and gravity at the same time, okay, this is quite an effective technique um, to work things out. So we've got a few more examples. Uh, so if we've got a pendulum 16 times as long, again, just do the same technique. T dash is 2 pi times the root of 16 L over G. We've got to take the 16 out. That's going to be 4 lots of 2 pi root L over G which is 40. If it's a quarter as long, we're going to have 2 pi times the square root of L over 4G. Okay, take the... Uh, that's an L, sorry, not a 1 there. Be careful with that. So take that out. This becomes a half times 2 pi root L over G. So that's a T over 2. Right, maybe the last one shows you that this technique actually does help you and you couldn't just do it in your head. If it's nine times as long and gravity is a quarter as much, okay, t dash equals two pi times the square root. We've got nine times as long, so nine L, a quarter G, so that's G over four. That becomes two pi times the square root of 36 L over G. Take the 36 out of the bracket, out of the square root sign, sorry, and that becomes two, six times the square root of L over G, which is 60. Okay, this is quite a handy technique. Hopefully these examples aren't too hard, okay, because when we start to do some things to do with gravitational fields and one or two other examples, okay, the numbers get a little bit harder. So have a little bit of practice on these, which are fairly easy to work out.